So we are back with some young people that are in an amazing field and doing some phenomenal things at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. And again, a satellite thing, almost seven years in the making. These engineering students uh, on the Eagle Sat team at Embry-Riddle have are launching. I thought it had been launched, but we're going to talk about that. The Eagle Sat Acute Satellite. Oh, wow. So this is so me. I didn't even know what that is. I just know that our lives run on satellites now. So Deborah Jackson, great to have you with us today. Thank you. You're with the Embry Riddle's Eagle Sat 1 team. Mm -hmm. And then we have Hilly Page. Hello. And uh, you're with the Eagle Sat 2 team at Emory Riddle. Yes. Wow, it's great to have you like brain children on with me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just saying, you know, the older we get, the younger you seem, and you, you guys are just doing these most amazing things. So this, you're building satellites at, at Prescott Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, basically. Okay, now you had a big launch coming up, and it yeah. didn't happen. You said you postponed it a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, okay. it had to be postponed for numerous reasons, um, like high winds, there was a faulty battery, um, some engine red flags, a boat down the range, you know. It's the name of the game, but we'd rather wait and do it right. Absolutely, because it was going to go Tuesday, but we're going to wait on that. So tell us about the Eagle Sat program. So the Eagle Sat program is an undergraduate research organization here at Embry-Riddle campus, and it is student-run. And what we're doing is we are designing, researching, fabricating, testing, and controlling cube satellites that are engineered by our students. It's an incredible opportunity. Yes, I guess. And Hilly, <laughs> what is a CubeSat? Because I don't even know what a Cube satellite is. <laughs> so a CubeSat is a low-cost way of doing science in space. Basically, it was invented about uh, 10 or 15 years ago. And so uh, this is an example of one. This is a CubeSat keeps that skeleton and so it really opens up uh, doing science in space to uh, college students at, at various universities uh, and so um, instead of having to build and design your own multi-million dollar spacecraft you uh, put these CubeSats on board uh, satellites that are already going up into orbit and so um, these things only weigh about three or four pounds and um, if you think about what you can cram in into a cell phone, think about what you can put into something three or four times its size. So we can do a lot of science um, very um, effectively and at the university le le level. Okay, that just blows me away. I mean, seriously, because this is gonna go up into orbit. You know, it, does it stay in the atmosphere and go around the Earth that way? Um, so yeah, so she is in space and she will be in orbit, but there will be what we call orbital decay and it's when there's just a little bit of atmosphere left at that level and so she kind of skips across and it's just enough atmosphere to slow her down. So we expect EagleSat 1 to be in orbit between 7 to 9 years. And it's a she. Well, I suppose like so. Ship. Yeah. It's a spaceship. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, and what do you, what do you, why do you want to launch this CubeSat? And I mean, you put a lot of stuff into it, but what do you want to find out from it? So particularly EagleSat 1 will be measuring that orbital decay I was just describing to you because um, the smaller an object is, the harder it is to predict the orbital decay on that and where she'll be at what given time. So like, where is she going to be in three years? It's a little hard to figure out. You have to crunch the numbers for it. And so we'll be watching her as she comes back down to Earth. So you don't mean it's like corpus delecti, it's not actually going to dissolve or anything, it's just that the the time kind of warps on it in terms of its projection or something? So it's really that um, as she's going around orbiting, she's hitting just a little bit of the atmosphere and so it's just enough to slow her down until she eventually kind of falls out of her orbit and then she'll burn up in the atmosphere. And so oh, she does burn up in the atmosphere. Yeah, she will. And so Ooh. we're just kind of seeing where she'll be at what time so that way we can help other small satellites predict when they'll be coming oh. down. And you're working with NASA on this? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. How, how does that work? Because you're launching it. You're going to be launching this, not NASA, or will NASA be launching it and you guys monitoring? Yeah, NASA oh, will okay. be launching it and then we'll handle mission control on campus from there. So students will be talking to the satellite, getting data, post-processing the data, making it relevant to the industry. And then you feed that back to NASA? Mm -hmm. Wow, you guys are like... Big time. I mean, this isn't a <laughs> phenomenal thing going on right here in Prescott. I think sometimes we're not we're not really sure. Now, this benefits students as well. When you're doing, you know, launching and creating and launching CubeSats, uh, what does it do for the students? So it really uh, opens up a lot of po po possibilities um, for students because uh, you take what you learn in class and you apply it towards an actual engineering pro pro project. So Deborah and I are both hired by NASA and we're paid by them. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, and so the biggest opportunity is just the hands-on experience that you get, um, and we run the program just like any other pr 
pro program. We work with uh, the JPL and all the various divisions of NASA to make this happen. Oh, how, what's it done for you, Hilly? Do you think personally, I mean, to be able to work uh, with NASA? I, I think just the, all the amazing pe people in industry that I've met um, and all the lessons that I've learned from them has been second to none. And so that's the best benefit for me. Well, I'm just excited because it's right here in Prescott. And, and uh, gosh, how about you, Deborah? Kind of well, made a difference in your life, too? <laughs> it's hard to describe the kind of opportunity it is to conduct relevant research as an undergraduate student. That's almost unheard of. But at Embry-Riddle, they really do provide that opportunity to their students. And because of an experience like this, I know for sure that I've picked the right field for myself and that I can continue on with my career confidently. Nice. Are you going to stay with NASA, do you think? Well, maybe. <laughs> <We'll see. laughs> How can uh, you get viewers involved with this? How can we watch when you send this off or whatever? So uh, to, to get involved, there are two main ways. So for the launch, there's going to be a, a, a live stream. But also, if you want to be involved with, with, with the program itself, you can uh, either go to Embry-Riddle. Um, okay. uh, so we are accepting applications from people of all majors. Um, okay. But also, uh, we are reaching out to, um, to high schools in the local area. And okay. so we have a lot of resources on campus. And so right. we want to get involved and um, offer them uh, uh, a space on our on our uh, Sounds, wow space I love that okay we'll <laughs> check out we have information on the screen you can check that out Amber Riddle thanks so much for joining us Deborah and Hilly and good luck on the launch all right